An Indiana mother, 31-year-old Letitia Lawson, in police custody. She couldn't take her son's tantrum. Admitted to killing her child. We do believe that that child had been deceased for several months. Lawson told police, quote, her son was with God. She wrapped his remains in a blanket. Gave him olive oil and vinegar. Gave him olive oil and vinegar until he stopped breathing. She placed that body in a closet. During questioning, police asked Lawson. She admitted if she knew at the time she had murdered her son. Lawson allegedly told cops. Yes. She answered, yes. I'm Jean Casares up in session in for Nancy Grace tonight. The mother in all of this, Letitia Lawson, 31 years old. She's in custody tonight, $25,000 bail. So for $2,500, this woman could get out. All right, the charge is now abuse causing death. I want to go out to Elizabeth Fields, reporter of CNN affiliate WANE. Do we all know? When this came down and police went to the home where she was living in, she was then taken to the station as a victim because she'd been missing. It was a missing family. Did she go in a squad car? Did they take her in a police vehicle? Does it matter? It is my understanding that she did go in a police vehicle. That 10-year-old daughter was put into a separate vehicle and she was taken into state custody. All right, Daniel Horowitz, defense lawyer, what that tells me is right from the beginning, she was in custody, taken in a police vehicle. We know she was read her rights after she got down to the station. She waived her rights and she consented, as well as the pastor did, to the search of the home. You're not going to get anything suppressed here. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting, Gene. Your analysis is, is right on. She was a suspect right from the get-go, and they knew what to do. But I have a question for you, because I'm not getting something. The police are looking for three people, the the three-year-old, the ten-year-old, and the mother. And yet, this child has been missing for a year. Uh -huh. Who knew to look for three people and didn't speak up all these months saying, why is the three-year-old missing? I don't get that. All right, to Mike Wilson, reporter, anchor, WOWO, Talk 1190. Who exactly went to police on Monday, and what did they say? Well, on Monday, like we said earlier, it was the, the pastor that actually uh, talked to police. He saw the reports on television that people were looking but for. But how did the reports get on television? Uh, the reports got on television when the police put the reports out there. Uh, the police said that they were looking. Once the family but reported, who? Okay. Uh, the, family. the family missing. Family reported. Okay, so Daniel, that's how it started. The family went to police and said, we can't find the rest of our family. There's two of them. There's a mother, there's a daughter, and you know what? We haven't seen the little boy in over a year. Now, Daniel Horowitz, whether the family knew or not, of what she did that's an open-ended question and why didn't they call yes. in the year right exactly it seems like a very strange situation and if we look at that part of this case we may get some insight into this mother and have an idea as to why she was so out there that she would commit such a heinous act all right let us go to Rachel in Pennsylvania hi Rachel hi Jean thanks for taking my call you're welcome thank you for calling my, my, first of all, I want to thank you and Nancy for being the voices for these little angels who've been silenced way too early. Um, it, it disheartens me, like your previous caller, I can't have them as well. And I sit here and watch and just wonder what is wrong with people that it, they go to these, these measures. But my question is, is this 10-year-old little girl, what was told to her? What did her mother say to her happened to her little brother? She had to have been in the house when this was going on. She had to know that he all of a sudden wasn't there. Why didn't she go to somebody at school, a neighbor? Uh, you know, where was the support for this little 10-year-old? What was told to her? And what did she see? What did she see? Rachel, I want to tell you that Nancy is resting tonight, but she really wanted to do this story. She called me up this morning. She said, we have to do this story because we have to get justice for this little boy, this precious, precious little boy. To Elizabeth Fields, reporter, CNN affiliate, WANE, do we know anything about Kiera, a little 10-year-old girl that many say is lucky to be alive tonight? Well, again, I, I default to Pastor Harris's comments to me because he, again, saw this all firsthand. He told me that he did see the little girl with her mother, but that she was very quiet with him whenever they were all together 
It, the mother did most of the speaking. She didn't say a word, and he even described her as looking scared most of the time. Mm, to Lillian Glass, psychologist, does that tell you that little girl was abused? That makes a lot of sense. And when you look at the pictures that you've been showing on the screen, you could see how the 10-year-old loved her little brother. She's sitting, he's sitting on her lap, and she adores him. And this must be devastating for her. Absolutely devastating. She's with Child Protective Services tonight. Virginia in New Jersey. Hi, Virginia. How are you doing um, tonight? Um, I'm, my question is that um, if they are saying that the little boy w was missing since November or Thanksgiving of last year, now we just had another Thanksgiving, yeah. Christmas, um, where did the grandparents really think that this child was? Because during the holidays, we are all with our families. So during that time, what were they thinking? Bingo, Virginia. That is an excellent point. Cheryl McCollum, crime analyst, joining us tonight out of Georgia. The crime investigation is going on right now. You are talking to all these people, right? All of oh, these people. They're talking to everybody. They're going to go back and talk to neighbors. They're going to talk to everybody in the family. Again, keep in mind, they've seen the 10-year-old since they've seen the 3-year-old. So all of these things, they've missed Halloween, they've missed Thanksgiving, they've missed Grandma's birthday, they missed the 10-year-old's birthday. None of these things are adding up for people. She ditched her family because she had something to cover up. She kept the child out of school because she had something to cover up. This is so clear to me. Yeah, yeah. If, if police right now are developing with prosecutors a case for murder premeditated murder, sure. what are they going to really look for here? She gave you the motive. She told you why she did it. Now the autopsy has lined up. The results are consistent with what she said. He's having a fit. He's screaming. He's crying. He's yelling. So she choked him. His larynx is crushed. It's consistent. Yeah. She gave it to you on a silver platter. She used the words, I killed him. The roommate used the words, she killed him. There's no mystery here. Yeah. None whatsoever. And we talk about people, there should be an outreach. She had a whole congregation, Jean, trying to help her who didn't even know her. There's outreach. There's programs. She didn't want them. She yeah. didn't want them. Yeah. And she went to a church. And you know, as Nancy has told you countless times, premeditation can be formed in an instant. You don't like the temper tantrums. They're aggravating you. In an instant, you can form that premeditation that you're going to crush that Linux. It started as a missing person.